Have you ever thought about starting your own farm right in your backyard? Well, if you have, you've probably thought, or wondered at least, about how much that costs. Well, stick around for this video because in this video, I'm going to talk about how much it costs us to start our micro farm in our backyard. Right here, coming up next on Once Upon a Tiny Farm. What is it? We're pulling carrots. Oh. And I see some right there. All right, so it's a little colder than I realized, so I'm just gonna get right into this video. And so what I'm gonna do is first go through the list of all of the expenses that we had starting our farm. And I'm gonna get into different ways that you could bootstrap your farm to do it on even more of a budget than we did. And we really tried to go on a tight budget, uh, okay? So the very first thing that uh, we did to start our farm was set up our irrigation system, which cost uh, around $330. And I did a video on that, setting up our um, wobbler heads on our sprinkler system. And I'm actually gonna be uh, expanding our um, irrigation system coming up because we only used half of this plot. This is a 4,000 square foot plot. Um, at least that's how long my tarp is. Uh, it covers 4,000 square feet. But last year we only used half of that, 2,000 square feet. So next year, uh, well, coming up for this season, I'm using the other 2,000 square feet as well. So I'm gonna be adding more. But there's a video on that, um, setting up our irrigation, if you wanna check that out. Also, our walk-in cooler was one of the very first things that we did before we even got to getting soil on the ground. Uh, I, uh, I knew that we needed a place to keep our produce uh, cool and store it after we harvest it. Otherwise, it's just gonna go bad really quick and everything that we grow is gonna be for nothing if you can't store it. And that cost about $700 to get our walk-in cooler. I got a used walk-in cooler uh, off Facebook Marketplace. It was, it was broken. It was, um, the unit was, was not working. So I basically purchased the, the shell of a fridge and then got an item called the Coolbot which essentially transforms um, an air conditioner into, um, I guess, like a like a condenser to uh, to make it basically a fridge. Um, it tricked the Coolbot tricks the air conditioner into thinking it's hotter, which makes the air conditioner get colder than it normally would, uh, which is really cool. And it also allows uh, small farmers like like me to create my own walk-in cooler on a budget. So I'm like seven hundred dollars for to make my own fridge is amazing. If you look um, online at what a brand new uh, cooler would cost, you're looking at like three to $10,000, depending on the size of it. So for me to build one for $700 is just outstanding. And Coolbot's really cool. I did another video on creating my own walk-in cooler. I'll put a link to that if you're interested in checking that out. The next cost I wanna get into is compost. Uh, we spent $700 uh, on compost that we got delivered here um, to basically create the first, I think we built about 20, 20, 20 beds. We didn't even complete the 24 beds that I wanted. Um, so I got two separate deliveries. Each one cost about 350. Um, not sure how many um, cubic yards each one was, but um, it worked out that I was able to fill, start 20 beds and that's what I used to grow all of our food for our first year last year. Um, so that was $700. I actually probably should have ordered more uh, compost, but I was just really trying to keep my uh, cost expenses down, um, being a new farm, new business. Um, I was trying to create more money at the market. Maybe I should have sucked it up and got another delivery of compost so I could have created the whole farm of beds, but I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be talking more about how uh, we're changing that this year. Uh, we're, well, we're making our own compost now. Hope not enough, uh, not enough compost to cover the whole farm that I'm gonna need, but enough to at least amend the beds and things like that. So the next thing um, I call, I labeled as farm infrastructure supplies. Um, 
That includes things like the tarps that you see behind me. That all cost a few hundred bucks. Um, that includes insect netting, low tunnels, seed trays to start all of our trays. Um, um, what else? What am I missing? Packing supplies uh, to um, bags to um, put display all of our produce and sell our produce in at the market. Um, and totes that we store all of our produce in to put in the cooler. All of that came to about $2,500. That was, that's an ex a big expense, but it was things that we just needed to have to start our business, and it's things that we won't have to buy ever again, you know? Um, so let's get into the next thing was tools. I spent about $335 on tools, and those tools included a hoop bender. Um, I use that to create my low tunnels. Um, I did a video on that. If you want to check that out, I'll link that. Um, I got a broad fork, which I use to aerate the soil um, when building these new beds because we are um, a no till. We're practicing minimal, minimal tillage. I didn't till this um, ground at all to start a farm. We didn't till at all. We were no till. Um, but I have tilled in the past, so we're not like I'm totally against tillage, but after I've tilled one time on the other side of my farm, I've never tilled again. Um, so the broad fork was really important to start our farm. Other tools I purchased were a soil blocker to, to make soil blocks, um, a scuffle hoe. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. It's to, uh, to weed, um, which was really important. I actually didn't use it enough last year um, for <laughs> getting rid of weeds. And my landscape rake I, I purchased a, it's hard to find in stores I, I found it on Amazon I found a 30 inch wide landscape rake um, all of my beds are standardized to 30 inches wide so it's exactly the width of every bed and I just use that when I'm uh, preparing my beds um, it's really nice to know that it's the 30 inch width width so I can if I ever need to reshape my beds that landscape rake really helps um, in letting me recognize that um, and it just helps smooth out the beds before planting. And the last expense I had was seeds. Seeds, I spent over $1,300 on seeds and I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to buy as many seeds as I did. Um, I overbought, um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that um, coming up later in this video. So don't quote me on this, but I think our total expenses came to approximately $5,900 to start our farm which isn't that bad, I don't think, uh, but it could have been even less, like uh, a bunch less. Um, so next I'm gonna get into ways that you could save some of those expense costs on your small farm. So to save money, uh, the best thing that I think you could do is try to create more of your own inputs for your farm. Those inputs include your own compost, um, which I did a video on that um, not that long ago, uh, making, your own worm castings. Uh, it's another thing that, worm castings are very expensive. They're like, thir I just spent $30 for, I think it was a 30 pound bag. So it's about a dollar a pound for the worm castings, but I could easily create my own worm bin uh, here and create my own worm castings and not have to buy it all the time. That's a regenerating um, thing. They'll just, they'll just keep, um, reproducing the worms and they'll keep eating our food waste so that's something that you might see coming up as a future video creating our own worm bin and with that worm bin with our own compost and our own worm castings we could make compost teas uh, which we could use as a foliar spray or we could just water in to our rows and create some really good beneficial bacteria on our our produce and that's something that I, I didn't do at all last year um, and it's something that I'm excited about trying for the first time this year. So that's another thing that you could do and would probably limit the amount of amendments that you would have to buy um, when you're doing that to your plants. You're giving them really good nutrients and that's something that I want to do and create more of my own stuff here on our farm. Another thing you could do um, is try to save your own seeds if you can. Um, it's something that I've really uh, started to get into last year. Um, I saved some lettuce seeds from, I think it was like a butter 
king lettuce. Um, I actually saved some seed from a Salanova plant, and that's the big thing that I want to try to do. So Salanova lettuce is what we grow the most of. It's what we sell in our salad mixes, and it's a really high quality lettuce. It's a really great yielder. The only thing with the Salanova lettuce is that it's really expensive. The seeds are extremely expensive. Um, it, I can't, off the top of my head, that's my biggest expense, um, definitely. Just buying like 10,000 seeds, um, it's like over $300 um, for, for seeds. So they are an open pollinated variety and I'm gonna try saving my own seeds so that I don't have to buy as many um, in the future in future years because if I could save my own seeds that eliminates a huge a huge cost I mean I told you I spent over thirteen hundred dollars on seeds some of that I didn't have to do but with the lettuce the sound of a lettuce that is the most expensive seed that I that I buy so if I could create my own seeds and save my own seeds that's a big big saving and if you're doing the same thing on your farm you know with lettuce that's something that you could look into as well now some people might be watching this and thinking whoa drew listen you're, you're leaving out the cost of land like that is a huge barrier that's in the way of a lot of people that want to start their own farm but i would say to those people that you should read curtis stone's book called the urban farmer where he discusses and talks about how you can farm on land that you don't own like your neighbor's backyard and you could uh, lease uh, land from your neighbors, uh, create a little farm in other people's plots that do have the land, and you could pay them back with produce that you grow in their yard. Um, so that's a way that you could farm if you don't have land yourself. I'll also include a link to that book I have listed in the show notes uh, below this video, and you could check that out. Another item that I didn't mention as one of our expenses, but that you might need to start your own farm is a vehicle capable of hauling all of your produce either to the market or to restaurants. Um, and that's something we didn't have to buy because we already, we have a van. Uh, it's the only vehicle that we have. We're a one vehicle family at the moment. We have a van, so we use the van to haul all of our coolers and totes to the farmer's market. But that is, could be a pretty big expense uh, if that's something you don't have and need to you know be able to bring your produce wherever you're selling it so that's another thing to consider so there's some things obviously that you just need to buy um, to start your business right but there's some things that I did buy mid-season that I didn't actually need to to start the farm but things that I realized I needed as um, as the farm progressed and as I started selling at the market. Um, so once I started having some cash flow come into my, my new business, my farm, I started reinvesting in some tools and some items that would help me this year and beyond once I had that cash flow. Those things include the broad fork. I, I did not start this farm with a broad fork. I actually was using a pitch fork um, to aerate um, the soil and I realized I actually broke that pitchfork um, probably from leaving it out and letting it get weathered it broke but um, that's not why I brought the bought the broad fork the broad fork I just decided was a tool that I needed especially in this no-till um, way that we're growing our food that that wasn't very expensive I, I spent like hundred and seventy five dollars I think um, on the broad fork that I got and I'll put a link below to that item as well um, if you want if you're interested in getting one for your farm it actually would work on a small scale too like even for just like raised beds and stuff like that you can get different sizes of broad forks um, how many times and how wide it is um, I think mine I got a 24 inch um, the square foot gardener model from uh, tread light is the company that makes it and that worked out really well uh, with my 30 inch wide beds um, so that's something that I didn't have to start but that's something that I got um, as the season went on another thing that I didn't have to start was low tunnels I decided that I really wanted to extend my growing season and I also wanted to get to market uh, a lot earlier than I did this first this previous se previous year I didn't get until um, second like maybe the second week of June because I had everything just growing in the field uncovered unprotected so I invested in some uh, electrical half inch electrical conduit and a bunch of uh, I think I might have got like 200 
feet of 10 foot by 100 foot long um, greenhouse um, plastic from, from Johnny Seeds. And that was kind of a big expense that I got um, in the middle of the season, but I just decided that I, I really want to invest in the future for the farm, for our business. And that's something that I'm gonna be utilizing very soon here as I have some transplants that I just uh, seeded in the greenhouse, but I'll be able to plant them out in the field a lot earlier than I did last year because I'll be able to put up those tunnels and get things started and protected from the weather. Another thing I purchased uh, later on that I didn't have at the beginning was bug netting. And bug netting was kind of um, expensive. Um, I think it was like $250 I spent for the amount of bug netting that I got. Um, but I'll post a link to that uh, down below in the show notes as well. I don't think I have a link for it yet, but I will try to find it for this video. Uh, but I just couldn't grow arugula. Arugula was something that I was planning on having every week at the farmer's market. Uh, nobody else was selling arugula, and I really wanted to have it there. But the bugs just, uh, once the heat came, I had it for a few weeks uh, early on in the spring, but once the heat came, the bugs just got to it and destroyed. If they get to it from a baby leaf stage, they're just done for from the beginning. So I knew that for the future years that I, I needed to cover them in bug netting so that, that that didn't happen. So I bought the bug netting and hopefully I don't have to purchase any more because this is a one-time thing. But I felt that it was worth it to be able to grow the greens and the quality of greens that I want to on our farm. Another big thing you could do to save money on your startup costs for your small farm is to not buy uh, don't overbuy on seeds like I did. Well, maybe considering world events right now, it's not the worst thing that to have overbought seeds, right? But what I did was I bought something like 100,000 spinach seeds, and I don't think I used even like 10,000 of those seeds. I think I only needed about 10,000 seeds, so I could have spent a lot less on spinach. Um, but that's okay, I guess, because I'll have a bunch of spinach seeds for maybe the next five to ten years depending on how much I'm growing because I'm only growing spinach in the spring and in the fall it's not something I'm growing all season long so I definitely could have um, bought less uh, the same thing with arugula I bought a lot of arugula I was planning on growing a lot of arugula but of course like I just mentioned the bugs got to it and I just stopped growing it but I'm gonna be growing more this year but I definitely didn't need to um, buy as many as I did as much as I did um, another thing, I bought like uh, five pounds of sugar snap peas and I didn't even get to plant them because I didn't have the space to plant it. Like I mentioned, I only farmed on 2,000 square feet, um, which might sound like a lot to someone with a small backyard, but for selling a bunch of different crops at the market, it's really not that much space. And I didn't even have the space to grow it, so I just bought a whole bunch of sugar snap peas and I never even planted them. But I'm planning on planting them this week um, and because I have them. And I'm gonna be using it kind of as a cover crop uh, to, cause I expanded how many rows that we have uh, wide here. So I'm gonna be using the peas kind of as a cover crop to uh, add some nitrogen and good stuff to the soil. And I'm gonna do about 100 feet of sugar snap peas and hopefully they'll be ready when we first come to the market um, in the beginning of May. So all of those things considered, I think that you could probably start a small micro farm like, like we have. Like this is 4,000 square feet, which is approximately about a tenth of an acre. I think that would call us something like a micro farm. I think you could do it on $5,000 or even less, maybe, depending on where you source the things that you need. And you, you know, hopefully you could learn from this video and figure out some things you do need to start and that you can reinvest in to purchase for the future once you start making money like I did. I think that helped. So there's probably some more things I'm forgetting at the moment, but I think that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. So thank you for watching, and if you found this uh, information helpful at all, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. If you haven't done so already, we'll do more videos like this. Uh, we talk about homesteading and we also talk about market gardening. So if you're interested in those two topics, please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.